perfectly clear. We've had a few little puffy clouds and some of those might blow over. When you look at the image of the sun, you might see some stuff wisping across the disk of the sun, and that's just a few thin clouds. But our image is actually extraordinary. We have beautiful sky and beautiful clear skies uh, right now, and we expect it to stay that way. Now, if you take a look at the image of the sun you'll, and you watch carefully, you'll notice that the disk of the moon has moved a little bit farther. It's encroaching, kind of like watching the hour hand on a clock. And it takes about an hour. It takes over an hour for the disk to move completely across the sun and another hour to move off again. So it's a very slow and gradual event. But as you watch the moon and watch as we progress, you'll see that it's quite noticeable. The crescent of the sun is going to become more and more thin. It's going to become narrower and narrower as the time goes on until we get to the annulus. And of course, that's going to be something that's going to be quite spectacular here in just a moment. Top of a telescope. The telescope is aligned so that it's tracking the motions of the sky. So here is the telescope itself. And you can see we've actually got the lens cover on here. The lens cover is to keep the sunlight from shining inside. If the sunlight were shining in here, it'd be heating up the optics. It would be able to project an image. That image would be very bright and very hot. I could easily burn a piece of paper with that. So we are not actually using the telescope tube itself, except that this camera right here is physically attached to the telescope. So our view is through the camera. There's a filter right up here. And the camera attached to the telescope is on a mount that is following the motions of the sky. So what we're seeing is the sun move across the sky just as you'd expect. It rose in the east, moved across the sky, and set in the west. And this telescope is aligned with an axis pointing towards the North Pole, the celestial North Pole. And the star Polaris is up there. It's daytime, so we can't see it. But as the sky moves, the sun moves across the sky, the stars move around the sky as well, and they circulate around. And so the motion of the camera is mounted on the telescope is following the motion of the sky. If for some reason we stopped the motion of the telescope, then what we'd be seeing would be the sun drifting out of the field of view. In fact, it would drift out of the field of view as if there were a movie running. This would happen very rapidly. Actually doing a very good job of tracking here. Let me mention, we're going to stay on the sun. We're going to continue to track the sun for, uh, for a while here to follow it. So you get a chance to vicariously view. If you actually are in, in a part of the country where you have clear skies, I would recommend that you go out and actually try to view. Now, let me give you a sense of, of uh, how you can uh, uh, view safely using some other methods. If you've got a pair of binoculars, you can use those to project the light of the sun. But what you want to do is be absolutely 100% certain that you never look through the binoculars. What you want to do is hold the binoculars away from your body and maybe keep one ocular, one side of the binoculars capped up. But orient the binoculars so the light shines through the binoculars onto the surface. So the sun is moving across the sky. It's moving against the background stars. But the moon is moving at a higher rate of speed as well. And your times here, you had uh, moonrise at, at 6.11 this morning. Mm -hmm. And the sun rose eight minutes later at 6.19. Right. All right, so the moon was leading the sun across the sky. Right. Now, what's happened since then is the moon has been moving from west to east. Mm -hmm. right? Now, the sun moves from east to west. Why does the moon move from west to east? What's what's happening well, mechanically? Well, it's um, we are orbiting the sun. Remember, and I'll say his name, Carl Peck. He is the one who really did a lot of work for getting this together, and and we're really we're really happy that we got a clear sky, and mm -hmm. that's that's the that's what you need in astronomy. Absolutely. No Thank clouds. Thank you, Don. No clouds. And in fact, uh, all the clouds have completely disappeared here. And it's, it's looking better and better. You can see the eclipse is, is really appreciably thinner. Uh, it looks like a crescent moon, except that it's a crescent sun. And uh, we're going, uh, going to see it again get, get uh, even more and more eclipsed. Now, another way to view safely is by using appropriate filters. The one was what the skies would look like in uh, an explanation of the eclipse. And we've also been reading in our books, in our science books, about the eclipse. And that's about all. Mm -hmm. Now, how many uh, you guys are eighth graders now, so you're going to be graduating. This is probably a nice uh, going away present as far as graduation is concerned. Uh, how, many, uh, how many students are here at the school that are, that are watching this? Uh, I'd guess somewhere to four or five hundred probably. Uh, and uh, it looks like uh, most of them are out on the field over here, out in the sports field. Mm, those, I think those are mostly the eighth graders. And it uh, looks like they've, they've got all sorts of contraptions and, and devices to view. Colette, I, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your last name. Colleen Deeringer. Oh, Colleen, I'm sorry. It's backwards in the northern hemisphere, but <laughs> that's true. It, it, but the opposite is true for the southern hemisphere. And what causes it, is, of course, is the tilt of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now going back to your, what you were saying before. Right now, the Moon is at apogee, meaning it's the farthest point away from the Earth. Mm -hmm. What does that mean in terms of eclipses? Okay. Well, when the Moon is farther away, its angular diameter in the sky is less. And it turns out that when the Moon is near apogee, its farthest point, 
its angular size is not great enough to completely cover the disk of the sun. All right, let me, let me stop it right there. Here's, here's a demonstration that people can try at home using okay. equipment they already have. Is make a Known as Bailey's beads. And that is right as the limb of the moon uh, moves across, revealing the uh, rim of the sun here, you might see a flash of light. And that's called Bailey's beads. OK, and you can see them right and there. And you can see them right there. So, uh, and you can also hear some hooting and hollering. That's and right. What we're, I'm gonna... we're, we've reached uh, annularity here. All right, now this is still not safe to view unaided. You still have to use a filter. Even if there's any of the sun eclipse like that, it's still just unsafe, patently unsafe to view the sun. And looking through a filter through glass here, this is, this is really amazing. You look up in the sky, and there's a, the sun is, appears to the naked eye to be just as bright as it was before, mm -hmm. but through a filter, uh, in fact, this is just, it's, it's just unsettling, actually. It's kind of, it's very odd. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, nice and, it's like mid-twilight, I suppose, like a very, very overcast day. It's definitely darker, and also the sky is a little bit bluer than normal, too. That's right. Yeah, you're right. And it's actually bluer high, but it looks like it's brighter around the edges. Mm-hmm. That's right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pictures. I'm, a, I'm a, just as much a tourist here as anybody else. Now we have a maximum eclipse here again. It's about as great as it is anywhere. And we're talking about having several minutes of, a, of eclipse. We're about six minutes or so. And we're already about halfway through. It feels like it's just whizzing by. I'll tell you, this is, this is a really neat event. It's, a, it's an astronomical event of, of I wouldn't say extraordinary proportions, but it's unusual enough that this is really, really something special. Now what I'm doing, I'm taking pictures through a camera that's mounted actually to a small telescope. And I'm taking a lot of pictures. The telescope has a fixed aperture, a camera, and it's not safe. What you'll be doing is burning out the imager in a thousand dollar piece of equipment. And if it's not your camera, you're going to be in big trouble. So be, be er, always err on the side of caution. Events like this are unusual and special, but they're not unusual and special enough to risk damaging your eyesight or to risk damaging expensive equipment. And again, there's lots of ways of viewing, and I think probably the safest possible way is by watching our television show right here. There's no way you can be injured by a projected image of the sun over your television. In fact, even a projected image of the sun onto a piece of cardboard, it may be pretty bright, but it's still safe to view. It looks like we've reached annularity. So about 89% well, of the light is being blocked at this point. That's really nice. We're looking like we're looking at this big hula hoop of sun. And again, looking up in the sky, you never know. It's, it's really extremely bright uh, to look at the sun. It, it, it is uncomfortable. It's not even a question of touch the sun. That's known as first contact. And then when the second, the edge of the moon first got completely inside the disk of the sun, that was known as second contact. And that happened just a few moments, or actually a few minutes ago. It's hard to believe. It feels like just a few seconds have gone by. And now we're coming up on third contact. And there we go. And a little bit of Bailey's beads action there. And now we're out. We're at third contact now. Fourth contact will be when the moon actually covers, uh, uncovers from the disk of the sun. The, the last contact will be the moon moving off the disk. And that will be it. Now, something I didn't see, but might have happened here, I just got all caught up here. Actually, I, I take that back. I do see this. There are a bunch of birds flying around all of a sudden. And these are birds that were not out a moment ago. What happened is there were a lot of bugs here that all of a sudden thought eclipse path. Anywhere in that eclipse path, the sunlight would have been blocked out. The disk of the sun would have been blocked out. You would have been able to see the fuzzy outer atmosphere, the corona that, that Chris mentioned. And you would also have been able to see stars. And right now, we were not able to see stars, of course, because the disk of the sun was not blocked out. The sky was still very much bright. But the sun is close to the Pleiades star cluster, the Seven Sisters, and the planet Mercury. And both of those uh, objects are in the constellation of Taurus, and so is the planet Venus. Now, that means that you can get a sense of the astronomical nature of all this by taking a look tonight. As the sun sets, you won't be able to see the crescent moon just yet. It'll probably be a little bit too close to the sun. 
but as you look a little higher in the sky, look for sort of a fuzzy smudge if you're not located in a city. That fuzzy smudge through binoculars will reveal the seven sisters. And in fact, through binoculars, you'll see there are a lot more than seven of those sisters. And then Mercury will be close by, and very bright in the evening sky will be Venus. And if you look a little bit clear, sometimes what happens is when the air cools, clouds form. And that's, that's the behavior of water vapor. And many times you will see air as it rises up on mountains. The clouds